How's it going, Brian? Thanks yeah. for thanks for chatting this. Uh, uh, nice to be here. So, um, would you be able to just tell us a bit about yourself and what you do? Well, my name is Brian Leland, and I work for an organisation called Enterprise Northwest. Uh, we're the local enterprise agency, and we help people with business ideas, kind of get them the reality. Um, so each day, uh, I'm talking to uh, potential entrepreneurs and uh, and current entrepreneurs, helping them to kind of get their business off the ground, and also help them grow their business. Is that where uh, business ideas would usually come from? Well, normally the, the, when people come on our doors or, or when you're chatting to people, they normally have the idea. Um, and I suppose our role as a business consultant is, is to help them develop those, those, those ideas. Uh, people come on with ideas kind of from a wide variety of kind of backgrounds. Um, some come on and use uh, um, ourselves as like a sounding board for ideas. So normally the ideas come from the people that are actually going to set up the, the business and we would help them sculpt it and mold it and kind of and act as a, a maybe a challenge function to make sure that the idea that they have is going to be successful in the future. And mm -hmm. um, would it be a common occurrence for you to have to solve a problem for someone? Well, whenever somebody, any business uh, idea or any business is going to solve a problem or a, um, for, for, for people because ultimately that business has to have people that are going to pay for the service or pay for the product. So ultimately that, that service or product is going to solve a, a problem for somebody um, and there's lots of consumers out there with all relevant different issues and problems and ultimately sometimes people come up with ideas to, to, to solve some of those and even over the last few, few uh, months in terms of COVID, people have spotted opportunities in the market. There's been problems in society and, and, and the market and pe uh, people and innovative people have come up with ideas to solve some of those. So there's been... Yes, there's been a lot of negativity, but there's also been opportunities for businesses to be able to solve some of those. Speaking about opportunities, how can you come up with business ideas? Well, everybody has, everybody has different personalities, and I suppose people uh, come up with um, business ideas in different ways. Sometimes people have maybe travelled and have seen an idea that has worked elsewhere and maybe have brought that back. Maybe they're involved in a family business as well, and that that has spawned some ideas and maybe there's that culture of entrepreneurship in the family. Sometimes through their work, people have maybe been in a work placement and they've spotted a, an idea or maybe a solution to a problem and they then spun that out into their own business. So everybody is completely different. A lot of the times locally, especially for young people, it's about maybe an interest or a hobby that someone has and then they've developed this and uh, developed it further and it has become, I suppose, a bit of a business and then they develop it further and they, they research it further and they delve deeper into it and they then see that this is, a, this is something I could make a career out of. Yeah. Um, so it is something that is, that is taught, at, taught at schools but very on a, a, um, a light touch level because I suppose it's about careers yeah. and it's about your exams and stuff there. So entrepreneurship, it's a light touch in terms of schools and colleges and universities. So young people especially aren't exposed as much as maybe kind of older people in terms of entrepreneurship they're not living it and breathing it every day so that that spark of an idea can come from many places mm -hmm. and do you think it's important to spend the time to come up with loads of different ideas absolutely because that that the one they, they, they say uh, feel feel they plan uh, but plan they feel yeah. um, so that's one of the things whenever people come on the us they may have come up with an idea last month, last year, or yesterday, and they're coming on the uh, us to talk about that the idea. Um, it's very, very important to research your idea in depth because th there's a number of things that you may or may not know. You may not know is there competitors in the marketplace. You may not know is there, I suppose, is there legal or legalities around kind of your proposed business. Uh, you may not know maybe is there enough people out there that want to buy and spend their money uh, on your product or service. So there's, we always try to people uh, say to people, listen, don't jump into things, take the time. Um, and we also say to people in terms of, not, not only after that market research, but ac actually test an idea. But you can test the ideas kind of um, in a number of ways. You can test it with your family, you can test it with your friends, you can test the way a, a particular focus group that you may set up. So you can test it to ensure that whenever you go out to the big bad world in terms of the bigger market, then you're, you're, it's going to be successful because that's what we try to prepare, um, uh, prepare people for, that the yes, the idea is well thought out. It's well thought out in terms of actual, the operational aspect, but it's well thought out in terms of financial and all bases have been covered. 
because oh, yeah. what we don't want is somebody to go out, set up a business, and then it they they fail. That's that's the worst thing. So once someone has an idea, how do you know it's a good idea, and how do you know it's something that people will want? Well, that I suppose uh, um, back to my my last point. It's about kind of coming up with an idea and thinking about all of the things that um, may uh, be relevant to it. So we, we, sometimes we talk about market research. Yeah. Market research could be competitors, it could be pricing, it could be legalities, it could be actually the product itself. Maybe sometimes, especially technology products or um, application apps now, um, which is a very easy entry point maybe for young people because it's low cost no, and they have the skills in terms of yeah. Uh, IT and technology and uh, other uh, developing up an app and there's lots of stuff out there now that can be, make it kind of nearly self-build. Um, so they can they can test it maybe focus groups and stuff there. So there's lots of stuff that needs to be done in preparation of kind of actually launching. And I always say to people, sometimes you can come up with an idea and you can set up your business next month, but you can also come up with an idea and your business idea might not launch until 18 months time or 12. Uh, 24 months time because there's there's so much to do in between right. and I always say to people listen you need to make a plan you need to make a, an action plan like a to-do list uh, the, of all of those things that you need to consider because what what you don't want to do is maybe open your business and realize that you forgot, forgot something that's yeah. a real deal breaker yeah. um, so that plan that kind of bespoke plan sometimes people talk about a business plan and they see it as a as a document and just a, a paper document but for me, I see a business plan nearly as a live document uh, that covers all of uh, areas of the business. So you're talking about market research, you're talking about how are you going to market uh, and advertise the business, how is it going to work operationally, um, how is it going to work legally, how is it going to, in terms of, and also the finances of it, which is a really important yeah. thing because you, um, people have to be prepared to pay for it. So you need to get it spot on in terms of uh, what you can charge for your service or your product. So there's lots to consider. For some businesses are quite simple and that, that planning can, can be a short space of time, but for some businesses that are a bit more complex, it could be months, it could be a year or two. It just depends on the sector and it depends on the actual business idea. Does a good idea automatically mean that it'll be a good business? And if not, why? I suppose the, there's been lots of examples of good ideas that haven't came to fruition um, and them, those are all for a variety of different reasons. Like as we talked about um, some of the things you have to do in terms of planning, one of the things that I didn't mention I suppose was the people involved in it and having the right people um, and I suppose for the entrepreneur themselves having the right skill set and I suppose being well planned because I've seen lots of startup businesses that have started off really well and then got sidetracked with maybe different things. Maybe they've 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 gone on they've they've grown too quickly and that's hard to manage. Maybe they, they've they've not grown quickly enough and maybe somebody else has got onto the market before them. So there's a so what what you ask in terms of is a good idea always a good business? Not necessarily. It has to be managed carefully to bring it to kinda of, I suppose its full full potential. Um what's what's ideation tell us about that? Well, ideation covers a variety of different things. In a business at capacity, ideation is about coming up with lots of ideas. Ideation is a, a term that's used a lot now, both in terms of a start, startup businesses, but also in terms of industry. Whenever uh, you could have a multinational that does lots of ideation because they're developing their product and always, always changing. For example, like the biggest social media platform in the world, uh, Facebook, they do lots of ideation, as you'll see. They're always making changes and tweaks, and they're trying to improve their user experience. Keeps it relevant, and I suppose keeps it relevant, but also keeps up with maybe the competition. And sometimes you see the competition might bring in a certain um, certain uh, function to their application, and then Facebook might 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 copy it or might kind of amend, amend theirs slightly. So they're doing ideation in a big organization. But ideation in terms of a, a small business, it's coming up with new ideas, it's coming up with new right. concepts, it's coming up with new marketing activities. Um, in the startup uh, world, it's about looking at brainstorming all your different ideas. Um, and you might come on uh, and talk to somebody with one particular idea and one particular service, but that talking to somebody um, 
and uh, and kind of working through that there you might end up through the ideation process with maybe three or four services or maybe two or three different products okay. so you're just kind of it's all about ideas and I suppose uh, Connor as you mentioned there it's about staying relevant yeah. and I was chatting to a business owner recently and they were saying like that's the struggle that they find I suppose they're creative but it, it's always coming up with ideas and yeah. it's always st staying relevant mm -hmm. because ultimately as, as we see online now there's lots of stuff being done online but society moves and consumer behaviours change yeah. uh, quite quickly like sometimes overnight so ideating to stay ahead of the pack is always really important but it can be challenging as well yeah. because just depending on the makeup of people sometimes people find ideation really easy and sometimes people find it really difficult. Mm -hmm. And in terms of a business idea, what are the first practical steps that you would need um, to, to bring the thing to life? Well, I suppose the, the, the first stage in, in a Northern Ireland capacity, and I suppose for, for young people, it's about talking to the right people. You know, young people are, are great, they're very creative, they're coming up with ideas, coming up with ideas that maybe nobody else has ever thought about but it's talking to the right people and surrounding yourself with the right people and then talking out the idea. I mentioned previously about uh, a business plan, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a physical business plan, but working through a business plan and process would be really important so that you've covered all the steps. You know? So that idea, the market research, the testing of the market, uh, thinking about maybe branding, thinking about you know, how you break into that market, thinking about your competitors, there's lots to consider in that business plan and process. But I always find that those people that are successful surround themselves with the best people. Now the best people could be a co-founder, it could be a member of staff, it could be family and friends, but they normally tell you what you want to hear. Uh, or it maybe could be external people as well. Or it could be a business consultant, it could be a, an accountant, it could be another business owner. Because I think in Northern Ireland anyway, we're, we're, we're a very self-start society and we want to help, we want to, I suppose, see uh, ourselves grow. And especially in the Northwest and, and, and there in Saban, we're, we're, I suppose sometimes we're, we're challenged in, in terms of we think we're forgot about, but we, we, we're very self start society. So that I think any young person in the Northwest, if they were reaching out to a successful business owner that has maybe already been through this, that they could act nearly as a, like a mentor to be able to kind of, not they, they wouldn't be talking to them every day, but they be, could drop them with them maybe once a month uh, online or on the phone and say, listen, this scenario happened to me. Oh, can you advise me on that there? So I think a lot of people that have maybe been successful and been through it, want to give a bit back to um, and there's lots of organizations that are out there that maybe offer that service in terms of that buddying up uh, that mentorship um, and it works quite well along with ideation what would what's the most important things when you're starting a business well the, i was saying there about the business plan and process and thinking it out but and then there's a, we, we talked about finance financial model and planning but it's also thinking about right how how am i going to pay for this no, because sometimes people will come in and they will ask how much is it going to start up, how much is it going to cost to start up their business. Um, but until you get on the actual putting figures down on paper, you, it could be a hundred pound, it could be five hundred pound, it could be a thousand pound, you just don't know until you start putting it down. And then it might be a case of, right, where do I find that money? No, is it finance? Is it personal investment? Is it loans? There's lots of avenues out there but it's known exactly um, I suppose what that what that ask, ask might be mm -hmm. so there it, it, again people will uh, in terms of the business plan and process people will uh, certain sections of it certain pr um, elements of it people will find easy so if you're a creative person when it comes to the market and thinking and planning out the market you might find that really easy and then somebody might come to the that creative person might come to the financial model and and maybe pricing and costing, and, um, and they may find that difficult. So yeah. that's where I say to people, listen, bring in expertise when you need it. No, yeah. So if you struggle with finance, bring in somebody that can support you with finance, or bring in that accountant to be able to help you to plan ahead for, for, for the first year. Um, and if you're maybe not creative, maybe bring in a, somebody that's creative, you know, a marketing person, mm -hmm. or maybe there's a friend, there's a family member, that works in that sector or is very creative and great at ideation yeah. uh, and they can come up with maybe uh, some ideas but always I always say this as well is in terms of small medium-sized businesses 
there's there's lots of competition out there. So I always would say to people as part of your market research, look at your competition, mm -hmm. see what they, how they operate, how they market themselves, what their pricing strategy is, where where they currently sell their products or services, because that can give you an idea. If you're looking to break into the same market, um, that can give you an idea. Maybe of 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 it can simplify. Uh, a lot of things for you because you know they've already done it and they have X number of market share, X percentage. Mm -hmm. And what sort of support is out there for someone with an idea for a business? Well, I suppose all, all I can uh, chat about is I suppose what's available in the Northwest. So um, there was a recent report uh, by the Federation of Small Business and they were saying that the, the uh, support uh, ecosystem for startup businesses in Northern Ireland is comprehensive but it needs to do more. It needs to reach kind of those hard to reach areas and communities in Northern Ireland. And uh, I suppose we, we were kind of very relevant or we're very aware of that in Darien Strabane. But there is support from various agencies. You have your local council, you have Invest in A, you have your local enterprise agencies, and you have a range of other organizations that provide specific advice to specific sectors. So you might have female entrepreneurship, you might have digital entrepreneurship, you might have youth entrepreneurship, you no know, Princess Trust are in that in that field. So it's about kind of knowing exactly where they go. Um, but in a local capacity, um, we, we, the dairy in Strana isn't too big. Uh, and even in the Northwest, if somebody was from Donegal, you have a local enterprise agency or you have a, a development partnership. So th there is lots of support there. Sometimes it changes year on year, just that there's minor tweaks and sometimes there's financial assistance. Um, but until somebody would come in, we, we can't really advise them. The local enterprise agency is an open network. You no know, People can come in and provide, get free advice. But until somebody would come in um, and tell us their specific sector, where they're located, we might be able to uh, advise them in terms of further assistance and signposting and also relevant assistance in terms of financial because there, there sometimes is financial support especially for 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 young people um because female entrepreneurship and young entrepreneurship is at the lower end of things in terms of um northern ireland so they're trying to incentivize um those particular uh, sectors they uh, start up a business and grow a business so sometimes there's a financial system but it's very much um ad hoc and it, it changes year on year so um, but there is a healthy um, support network out there, just depending on what sector it is and uh, age profile and where they are, it can vary um, depending on, on that. Can, uh, can someone start a business without money? Absolutely. I think if you had asked me that question probably 10, 15 years ago, I, I, kinda, I might have screwed my face up. But at the same time, now you, you, now you have technology technology anybody can start a business i have lots of example where somebody has started a business maybe on ebay like ebay is a great example i think over during covid we've seen just a huge growth in e-commerce of businesses that maybe never thought about selling online but now they sell online and it might be 20 or 30 percent of their sales year on year we've also seen a growth in people that never purchased online now purchasing online so the, the market is for, for online, so uh, that online facility, you, as long as you have a computer yeah. and an internet connection, you can start a, start a business. Yeah. And I've had people that have come in and started an eBay business and they've grew and they've grew and they've grew. And maybe sell secondhand things, maybe kind of buying in stock, they, they, yeah. they upsell and stuff like that there. Um, I know of other young entrepreneurs that have bought a piece of equipment at £100 and that's their business. No, they, 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 a certain machine that, that manufactures a certain product. Yeah. It's all done remote in their computer, in their bedroom. So definitely you can, and technology, as you know, all the, the YouTube and the, the Facebook and stuff like that there, you can run a business yeah. online now without very, very little uh, money. But then again, some businesses, just depending on their nature, require a lot of investment. Maybe they're going on the premises, maybe they need staff. Um, so it just depends on the, the, the actual business idea, but absolutely you can start a business on a shoestring, absolutely. And you just gotta embrace technology and even thinking about marketing. You no, know, businesses traditionally would have had to invest X number of pounds in the marketing. Now, you, you, you can do all your marketing online. Mm. No, 
I'm not saying you have to, that you should do. It completely depends on where your market is. Yeah. Now, if your market's online, yes, you should be advertising online. If your market's not there, then you shouldn't be. But it, it can help build the profile. But you could, depending on, on your market, advertise everything online. You can do your accounts online. You can do everything online. So, no. So, it, what, what I'm trying to say is, in terms of a, possibly a young person thinking about starting a business, the, the barriers to entry of starting a business are, are quite low. Uh, so, it, and I think the, if, you, if the barriers to entry are low, and I suppose it's a low cost, then there's no harm in trying something. No, I think, yeah. I think before, uh, even in, when they, in America, no, if you haven't failed in business, you're nobody. No, they, they, but where here you think, oh, I failed business, they're, they're a failure. No, yeah. you should, yes, fail, but go and do it again, yeah. go and do it again, go and do it again. Like, uh, I think there's lots of examples, I think it was uh, Angry Birds, no, lots of examples out there of businesses have kept going and kept going. I think Angry Birds was their 23rd game and the rest of them had all failed, and then they just they just had it lucky. So definitely, it's just developing those skills and learning from your mistakes. Yeah. So I would all, um, we have lots of examples locally of just young people that have tried something online because they, they can do it really quickly and easily, and they can do it better than, I suppose, a lot of other people. So yeah. definitely, you can start a business with very, very little investment. 100%. So what normally motivates someone to start their own business? It's a, a, good, a good question. Um, everybody, everybody is motivated by different things. Um, in my experience, I have had lots and lots of variety of different reasons why somebody has started a business. Someone maybe has lost their job, and I suppose with COVID, it's very relevant. No, people maybe have lost their jobs uh, recently, and maybe <coughs> they're looking for a change of career. Maybe they, they want to uh, um, never uh, have that risk again of kind of losing their job. Um, sometimes people maybe are in an employment that maybe they don't like it as well, maybe they, and they don't like working for someone. A whole variety of different reasons. Other people as well um, have maybe just spotted an opportunity and they've come up with an idea, um, and then they're maybe in employment and they say, well, do you know what, this is something that I enjoy. Um, I'm going to kind of explore this further, maybe leave their job. Sometimes they. For a lot of people, they, they, and that's in its that situation, they would tend to go part-time, develop up the business further, and then maybe kind of when it's grew to a certain level, they would leave their employment and then go full-time in the business. So there's a whole variety of different reasons. One that um, is, a, is a big one in terms of an interest in the hobby. No, there's lots of, because ultimately, whenever you run the business, it's possibly uh, different from whenever somebody is employment, is you want to run a business and you, you enjoy. Yeah. Sometimes you're in employment and a job that you don't enjoy, you know, and it's just necessary to pay the bills. But that hobby, that interest, you're going to work harder at it. You're going to be fully committed. You're going to do, sometimes people may be in employment and they might work their 35 hours or their 40 hours and that's it. Whereas if you're running a business and starting up a business of something that you enjoy and love, you're going to put your heart and soul in yeah. it. You're going to work and work and work. Day. It's up to a certain level where you can maybe kind of relax a bit. So we would tend to find that's the main thing in terms of people uh, starting a business. It's a passion, it's a hobby. I've, I've, I've um, experience of people coming on and maybe it's just their, their life scenario. Maybe they have traveled. Maybe there's a family situation that kind of has led to something. Uh, maybe there's a life situation that has led to something and they've been able to develop up an idea or the thought that that, I, that would have been useful if you know, if I had a dad that, that whenever maybe that situation happened. So there's a whole variety of uh, different scenarios. For young people, it, it's normally their travel. It's maybe maybe they, they maybe haven't got employment or it's maybe a hobby or a pastime that they maybe want to develop up further. We've had lots and lots of examples of maybe people that maybe have an interest in fashion and they've started just maybe um, making a product and then next they put it on Instagram and then next somebody uh, messages them, they say, I want to buy that there and then somebody else's and they jewelry and they put that up on Instagram and say, I want to buy it and then the, the kind of the light bulb moment say, I could make a business out of that and especially whenever, this is a thing sometimes people don't know, you can be employed and self-employed, i.e. run a business at the same time. Yeah. So somebody could be employed full time and making their, their 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 product at the weekends and putting it up online and maybe delivering it then or sending it, posting it out as well. And they can do that. Yeah. 
No, so you can be employed and self-employed at the same time, and then sometimes it gal- gathers momentum in business, and then that's where they say, "Well, I want to maybe divide my time half and half in employment and my business." So, uh, a whole variety, gradual way. gradual way, and I suppose it's less r- risk as well. But just sometimes people fall upon it. No, I, I have a friend who's an accidental entrepreneur. That's what he describes himself as: <laughs> an accidental entrepreneur because something just fell on his lap. And he just said, there, there's an opportunity there. Yeah. Now, obviously, he had the skills. They, they spot an opportunity. But he, he, he did it, and then he did it again, and then he did it again, and then it just snowballed from there. And um, he, he's a very successful business person. Now, he wasn't born an entrepreneur. He was just an accidental entrepreneur, and he had the skills to be able to kind of lift it and, and run with it. Speaking of skills, what skills would someone need to become successful as an entrepreneur? There's, there's a whole range of uh, different skills. Uh, some entrepreneurs have them, some business owners and entrepreneurs have them all, and some have a few of them. But it, it's just spotting, being able to spot an opportunity you know, and kind of understand when, when it's the right opportunity. Risk ticker is, is a big one because ultimately it, it is a risk. No, you don't know if somebody's going to come into your store or go onto your, your website tomorrow and buy that product. So there, there's an element of risk. Sometimes people and their personality don't like taking risks, so maybe they're not maybe suited to run their own business. Um, but I suppose in the capacity of young people, young people have less uh, responsibilities. So why not take that risk? Because what are you going to what are you going to what, what are you going to lose? This is, this is the thing. Um, it's about being well planned, uh, having a financial head. But again, as I, I said previously, if you don't have, I have examples of of people locally who run businesses, very very successful business, but they're not financial people. But they have a very very good accountant that keeps them yeah. keeps them right. I have also very very good examples of uh, people locally who are very, very strong in the financials, very, very well planned, able to manage everything out, but they're just not creative. So they maybe work with a marketing company or a marketing... I mean, they're playing to their strengths. They're just playing to their, their strengths. So you know, in terms of that kind of, I suppose, managing and being well managed as well. I, I very, very rarely do you see a very badly organized, good business. So you have to be organised because you nearly have to be like a quarterback and organising all these things. Um, so there's a whole range of different skills and some have them all and some have a few, but they, they bring in the other ones as and when needed. And what if your business fails? Well, this is, this is life. No, no, one, no one has a crystal ball. All you can do is plan ahead as best as possible. And what has COVID taught us? COVID has taught us there's plenty of businesses that have gone gone to the wall during COVID. No one had, would have foreseen this. But as I said uh, previously, in America, there's lots of business failures, but they pick themselves off, up, they dust themselves down, and they go again. It's nearly to be expected. It's, it's nearly to be expected. Well, you, hopefully you don't, and there's lots of external factors that you can't, you can't uh, foresee. Like, uh, for example, even the, the local um, tourism businesses in the last year, right across the world, have all been badly affected. Who knows when that might come back again? So that's just a, a factor outside their control. There's obviously there's factors inside your control, no in terms of being planning and foresight and stuff like that there. But in terms of failure, like failure is a part of life. No, I think in life generally, I think you learn more from your failures and your knockbacks than you do from those pats in the back. No, I, I generally and kind of in, in business, but also in a career. No, that that knock in the career might kind of spur you on to drive you drive you further up the ladder. Yeah. So failure is for me, failure is good, but it's reacting quickly. No, it's not kind of dwelling on that failure. It's rea- reacting quickly. Why do we feel learning from mistakes and then going again? Definitely. Um, can you give us some examples of local entrepreneurs who've had great ideas and or who are a great inspiration? Well, I suppose when we're talking about um, young people, you know, they're, they're, there's lots and lots. Of, I, I, I know quite a few of them. There's probably a lot, lot more on social media that yeah. uh, just because I don't follow a certain social media profile, uh, I maybe don't have a full understanding. But like some of the guys that we've already interviewed for uh, Week Gen C, um, the guys in Storefront, now, th- those are two young guys. Um, they, they entered a really competitive market in terms yeah. of the street clothing. So when you think about 
two young guys from uh, from Derry that were wanted to start up a clothing brand and a clothing store. When you have multi multi million pound organisations operating in the same city, yeah. so you're going against the monster organisations. But these guys have kind of carved the niche. They've they've quite yeah. good with their social media. Mm-hmm. You know, they're very very uh, friendly and personable. So maybe that has supported them to kind of break into that market, and they're doing well. Now they're not going to grow kind of too rapidly. They're growing gradually, and when that's that's the sensible thing to do. But for me, that gives inspiration to the the, the next young boy coming through that has an interest in fashion. No, it, it's achievable. It doesn't have to be a middle-aged man. It doesn't have to be a middle-aged woman that starts a clothing brand. It can be two young guys in their twenties that just have a kind of ha, has a, a niche and a unique selling point. Mm. So those guys should be inspiring lots of others. They and again, they use the the power of social media. No, they keep costs down, but also that's where their market is. Yeah. That's where they 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 have to be, and they they've developed their their skills further. Uh, I have a, uh, another young guy, uh, D Flow Designs, and during COVID, he set up a business. This is a guy who set up a business, the bedroom business. Um, he bought a, um, um, a 3D printer, and he now designs uh, bespoke uh, products for uh, marine uh, aquariums. So again, a very, very successful business, mm-hmm. all done online. And he's sending stuff all around the world. His stuff in uh, Australia, his stuff in uh, Eastern Europe, his stuff in America, sending all around the world um, because that's where those hobbyists, those enthusiasts are. And he's designing that up and d- uh, printing them in his bedroom. And that's the hundred pound startup. That's a hundred pound piece of equipment. So again, I suppose it's an online business. You don't actually see down out front and center, but you don't have to. You, you, you can start a business, you don't have to be the face of it. It be a completely online business and it might be just behind the branding of the business. So that that's fine. No, you don't have to always put yourself out and be the face of the business. Yeah. So everybody, like, that's a fully online business. They have actually no presence, no shop presence, whereas the guys in the storefront are. So there's a variety of different, I suppose, options and examples. Uh, they inspire people and I think we need more of those because I think when you see somebody that you went to school with or that you, lives down the street and somebody says well he runs his own business or she runs her own business and they're in their mid 20s or they're maybe in their late teens um, and they're saying well, that's achievable I can do that there why, why not me sure I used to go to the same youth club or I used to go to the same play in the same football team as him so I think it, it's far more achievable for anybody now to be able to start up a business as I said it could be low cost. It could be. It could be. You can feel, and failure isn't just no. You, you're you're walking down the the street with your head held down. No, failure is part of part of life. So it's taking that and learning from it and and developing it further. So I think we we, we can always do more. But I think we do have a have a, a good examples locally that hopefully can inspire all other young people. They take the plunge. Definitely. Well, um, thanks for chatting with us, Brian. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. Yeah, it was really interesting. Thank you. Thank you.